everybody, this is Birch. Uh, I did this uh, video talking about a conversation I was having around what's so wrong with the advice of don't like my politics or don't like my book, don't buy it. And uh, I've talked a little bit about the, the, just the tone. And, and, and I think people undervalued when, when they respond in the video, they kind of brush the tone aside, but it really does go a long way because imagine, if you will, we're having a conversation and I tell you, uh, hey, if you don't like my channel, then you know you, you should watch another channel. There's lots of other things out there to, to check out. I hope you find something you like. Versus, hey, if you don't like my channel, uh, go screw yourself because you're an idiot anyway. Don't watch it, dumbass. See, there, there's a there's a slight difference between those two. You know, I would never say the second one unless I was talking to Bumbles. But otherwise, for the rest of you, I would I would say the first. Uh, but that, I think tone has a large bit to do with it. Uh, but one of the points people brought up in the comments that you know, we can talk about is they say, well, wait a minute, though. If you're a creator saying that for a book, you know, you're, you're throwing it out there, you know, don't buy my stuff. Well, that may be all well and good if it was your comic, if it was your crowdfunded book or your independent title, even your, you know, thing that you're shopping through image. But when you're working for the big two or you're working on a commission project, you know, you're not just talking for yourself. You're now talking for the inker and the artist and the colorist and the letter and the editor and like everybody involved. You're now making a group decision of just making it all about yourself. And that's wrong. And uh, I, I, I agree. I can't argue with that. I, I absolutely agree. I think if you are uh, an individual in a book and you're throwing something out there, you're, you're, you're making a decision for more than just yourself. Now, in the case of Kelly DeSue DeConnick and this particular quote, um, it was stated at the time when Bitch Planet was coming out. And that was, uh, you know, a book obviously um, put through image. So it was Kelly Sue's own you know, material. However, in fairness, even in that case, even though Kelly Sue has taken the risk and she arguably, you know, owns the property, you know, there is some co-ownership with the artist of that book. Does the artist feel the same? Probably the artist does for that particular title. But still, she is making a comment that is going to impact more than just herself. And uh, if you want to continue to be able to work with people, if you want people to continue to work with you, you have to be a team player. And comments like that is, is not being a team player. And I think that that's uh, the, it's, it's a combination of just bad common sense. So... I said this in the original video, me saying, hey, what's wrong with that comment? What's wrong with saying, you know, if you don't like my politics, don't uh, don't buy my book. I mean, it is common sense. It still is not a smart thing to necessarily go out and tell people if you, you know, unless you're willing to take the consequences of that. And, uh, and, and generally speaking, most people should come to that conclusion on their own rather than, uh, you know, you having to tell them most people should, you know, themselves opt out. And I think that's good advice for everybody to hold just, you know, for themselves. But um, if, uh, if you're talking about a, a project where it's other people, then it does get to be an issue. So now if, you're, if it's Marvel DC or if it's a commissioned book, like an IDW book or something like that, then yeah, I think you've got some pretty major problems on your hands. Because in that case, you know, the editor, it's the company, in this case, Marvel, that's hiring somebody to act on their behalf. They're putting their name on the book. They're, you know, they're, they're basically producing a title. Spider-Man is owned by Marvel. It's not owned by Dan Slott. So when Dan Slott goes out and does something embarrassing, you know, it may be bad for Dan Slott in the sense that Dan Slott may get less work for Marvel. But ultimately, the damage of whatever Dan Slott does is, is uh, it, he doesn't take the brunt of it. He might take some personal consequences of not getting more work. But generally speaking, that's going to hit, you know, that's going to hit Marvel. If the, uh, you know, if, if the head writer for Superman got arrested very publicly as a, uh, as a pedophile, for example, just some, some really abhorrent, terrible, terrible crime. And then in the sentencing or in whatever news media came out of that, you know, the defense was, well, I write Superman and, you know, in my view, Superman is also a pedophile and, and I, you know, he's like me and that's part of why I did it. If comments like that started to go out, it would be damaging to the brand. Now, mo most people would hear that and go, well, that person's clearly a lunatic, but they'd put it this way, it wouldn't be helpful any more than, you know, if... <laughs> If you, uh, if you were an artist on Captain America and then you went out and you murdered some people or you, or so I'll, I'll quit going to these extreme examples, something much more benign. 
if you go on Twitter and you start saying things like, to me, Captain America is a socialist, and if you don't like it, you know, screw you, I don't want your money anyway. The problem is you're not speaking for yourself. You're speaking for the company. Now, what's the remedy for that? Well, the remedy is, is quite simple. Who was the manager who hired this person in the first place? This is the editor. The editor is the person who put this, this writer or artist, whoever it happens to be, on the comic. It then becomes the job and responsibility of the manager, the editor, to step in and say, hey, uh, the comments you're making have a detrimental effect on the comic and the readership, and, uh, you know, you, you can't do that or you're going to lose your job. Now, a smart company would have these guidelines clearly identified. And there would be like when you get your contract, there would be a little paper that says things like if you go out and you uh, antagonize potential customers, if you insult them, if you do something that is going to harm and damage the reputation of the company and impede sales, then we may terminate you. And that, you know, that that language should exist. And, you know, hilariously, uh, hilarious is probably not the right word. This language kind of does exist. Many contracts that are signed up for for comics do have language in there stating it's, you know, it's at will. And if you do something to, you know, damage the reputation or, or leak the scripts or do something that would impede the sales, you know, you can be terminated. That that's generally language that, you know, you have in work for hire contracts. So, you know, that, that would be smart to do. And we also be smart for comic companies to occasionally remind people since social media is still relatively new. And, you know, many people do not have the maturity to handle their social media with elegance and grace for editors to say, Hey, you're coming on to this project. Remember our goal here is to sell comic books. You know, of course, you know, you're a freelancer, you're not employees, so you're free to say whatever you want, except if you start saying things that, uh, you know, embarrass us, uh, have a detrimental effect on the book, you're going to get taken off of it. We know that this process already exists because it has worked in the other direction. We've seen creators, whether they're pencilers or colorists or, or writers, who uh, mouth off about you know something that they've done, like the guy who was sneaking in anti-Jewish messages into X-Men Gold, number one. Uh, that, that got the guy fired. He doesn't work for them anymore. His career is over. Uh, there's been other examples of it. So comic companies can work pretty quickly when they detect or sense that something is going to you know, be harmful to them as a company. The, the problem is that you know, the, the comic editors, the managers, they feel stymied by social media. They don't feel like they can get in there and really say anything. And in many cases, they're friends. They agree with the comments that are being made. And so they don't, you know, they're, they're not doing that. And the other problem you have here, and I'm, I, I'm not saying this makes it right. I'm saying this makes it, you know, what it is, is the fact that the editors are paid so little that they are not waking up every morning thinking, I need to make sure I maximize value out of this comic book. If they were thinking that, you'd see much better marketing. You'd see much better actions. You wouldn't see the editors themselves on social media complaining about having to do their job or answer emails or just basic things. But, you know, the editors feel comfortable saying things like that. So if the editors feel comfortable saying things like that, they're sure as hell not going to jump in and, and start to, you know, make comments toward the uh, their creative team if they're also doing things to isolate readers. Bluntly, the editors don't really care. On top of that, you know, nobody will admit this. And it is, it is weird. There's an interesting hypocrisy here. The editors are at least aware on some level that social media means very little to actually the sales of the comic. It's people who are talking and, and you know, demanding things on Twitter account for a tiny, tiny, insubstantial fraction of uh, the overall comic buying you know, uh, population. And so they don't really get involved in that because it doesn't matter. And the reason why they believe that is because they've seen the numbers like all of us have, and they've seen creators that come on and just spaz out and act insane on Twitter, and they do not see much difference in sales. They've concluded that pretty much whatever happens there doesn't matter. I've heard from editors that say, you know, they're, they're upper management. They're the C.B. Sobolskis or the Didios or, you know, the Jim Lees, Marie Javins. They're not paying attention at all to any of this. They're not going on Twitter to them. It's just it's, it's a waste of time. And it's what, you know, kids do. And it's just not, not anything that they need to, to be concerned with. So when they hear rumblings like, 
oh, somebody is mouthing off and saying something crazy on social media, the higher up people are like, I don't know why you do social media in the first place. It just seems like a waste of time. So I'm, I'm not going to waste my time even looking into this. And that's how we get where we are. But I, I, I want to acknowledge, yeah, if you're saying something like, don't buy my books, and you're, you're almost daring people to not buy the books, and you're working on a team project from a company, yeah, that is a problem. You're making a statement for a lot of people who probably do not agree with your statement, who are just hoping for continual work, who don't really want to see you mouthing off. Unfortunately, and, and you know whether you like this or not, um, like I said, the social media impact is extremely low. And generally speaking, you know, that because we're so polarized, somebody like Kelly Sue saying, don't like my politics, don't buy my book, the amount of people that are going to be turned off and stop buying that book is probably equal to the amount of people who are going to say, yeah, you stick it to those men and they will start buying the book. Now you may say, no, no way. We've said before, those people aren't buying the book. Yeah, they're not. Nobody is. That's the entire point. If you look at the sales for, say, Bitch Planet, nobody really is buying. Nobody was buying that book. The sales were, were awful for Bitch Planet. It had terrible sales. So, we're, you know, if we're arguing like, you know, what we, you and for that matter, the sales video is up there for Captain Marvel. And it's up there for when Kelly Sue was on Aquaman. The sales were in the toilet. They were in the toilet before any statements were made. They were in the toilet after the statements were made. The reality is the statements that Kelly Sue made had very little bearing on the fact that it was not an exciting book and people were not that interested in buying it. That's, that's the dirty secret of social media. You can be really pleasant or you can be a complete a-hole on social media. If you're writing, if the comic itself is poor, people don't, people don't buy it. It, it doesn't matter. There's, there's very few people who are out there going, well, this comic book is absolute trash, but the writer is really pleasant on social media, so I think I'll give it a try. They don't do that. They just ignore it entirely. Anyway, um, so fair is fair. That was a counterpoint people said in the comments. You are correct. Thank you, for, uh, as always, for chiming in and giving me your opinion, and I appreciate, I appreciate the engagement. Thank you for listening. Keep, keep buying stuff or clicking, whatever. 